Is the only solution to female fashion the burqa? <laughs> well, this is a comment that I got from a, a, a subscriber here recently who was commenting on one of my videos about female fashion. Uh, in that video, I was talking about how uh, women's workout clothing is ridiculous today, which it is. You know, they basically wear painted on bra and panties, some people, you know, and you can, they leave little to nothing to the imagination. And my whole argument was that, like, you know, this is generally rude because it's going to force involuntary reactions out of men, make them feel uncomfortable, make them feel sexual things that they might not have any interest in feeling. It's just that, okay, they essentially now have a almost naked woman in front of them doing workout moves when they're just trying to get a workout in themselves. And I made some other points too, but this is the one that the guy was responding to. And his, his idea was like, well, you know, what he said, he said, uh, as much as I do somewhat agree with your view on this, I can't help but think that its logical conclusion is the Islamic one in which women have to com be completely covered as to not arouse the men. <clears throat> and I get where he's coming from here because I was making an argument about, hey, this is not fair to men. This is not kind to men. I also make an argument that it's not fair to women either. But, you know, taking that point of, oh, it's not fair for you to be making men feel this way. It can sound like I'm saying it's not a man's responsibility. But in that video and right now, I want to reiterate, it is always the man's responsibility in how he responds. Okay, even if women are dancing around naked around you, it is on you to figure out how to respond well is on you ultimately to master your sexuality and not become a slave to lust, right? That's, I mean, that's the truth. And honestly, I don't know anyone else who has put as much effort into helping guys do this. A huge amount of my videos are on sexual self-control. I've got an entire course on it. Like, you know, I'm very much in the mindset that a man has to master himself, right? Because, you know, our, our culture, at least right now, it's not, it's not becoming more conservative. But with that being said, can a man have a say in things? And just because he doesn't want women to be dancing around almost naked in front of him when he's trying to work out, it doesn't mean that I think that women have to be completely covered from head to toe. I think there's got to be some nuance in this, all right? So let's, like, let's have a conversation here about what that nuance should be, all right? So first of all, I don't believe that women should be completely covered head to toe, okay? I think that's entirely, uh, you know, pushing the problem onto women, taking zero responsibility, which I'm not for. And I also think that the female form is beautiful. And I think that women, naturally, they want to display it. And on some level, that's not even a, a bad thing, okay? You know, like the body's not bad. It's a beautiful thing. In fact, the issue is that it's almost too beautiful sometimes. <laughs> and I know that that's generally the idea around you know, the Islamic one where it's like, hey, this is a sacred thing. We don't want to be putting it out there. We don't want to be devaluing something that is so sacred and so important. We want to keep it very private, very special. And I think there's, you know, value to that. But I think there's there's a line that we can draw, okay? It's like, let's, let's start first talking about public all ages spaces like the gym, okay? What is appropriate to wear there, I would argue, is very different than what is appropriate to wear in other spaces. We already know this, all right? It's men and women are allowed to get naked in a changing room, but not in the middle of the grocery store. Why? Because context, because, you know, who knows who's going to be standing there in the grocery store. Maybe it's going to be a little kid. Maybe it's going to be, you know, someone who just doesn't want to see that part of you, okay? <laughs> And so we have we have this understanding as a culture and we've built this up and it's pretty well ingrained that, hey, you know, space matters. Where you're at matters. And so, you know, a place like the gym, I think it's fair as a man to say, like, I would like my culture to go this way where people wear more reasonable, more reasonably covering clothing. That's it. But I'm also open to the argument that in other spaces, 18 and older spaces, spaces like nightclubs and stuff like that, maybe we relax the standards a little bit. And, and to be clear here, I'm not talking about any sort of legalistic standards. I'm talking about like if we are going to be developing a culture, because we are constantly always developing a culture. A culture is not a static thing. A culture is, is the result of people's tastes and opinions and uh, actions bouncing off one another, right? And so my push here is for a culture that has more self-respect and dignity. I would much rather live in a culture where women are more appreciated 
for who they are rather than what they look like. Now, I'm not also an idiot. I recognize that the way women look is important. It's important to men and to women, not even in a bad way. Like, female physical appearance is a part of their fundamental sexual attraction mechanism. Okay, so I'm not going to deny a woman her, like, sexual expression that way. Because, you know, her the way she dresses is a big part of her sexual ex expression. It is for men, too, to some extent, but almost in a different way. Like, for a man, it's like if he can, his, like, if he's got, it's more about status display. And in some part, it could be physical. You know, he wears a shirt that makes his muscles look good and that sort of thing. But in a lot of ways, it might be, well, he wears an expensive watch or some expensive shoes or, you know, whatever. You know, because for men... Their sexual attractiveness has a lot to do with their uh, status, their financial status. So I'm not saying men shouldn't be able to do that kind of stuff. They sh shouldn't be able to wear their drip and things like that. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. However, again, you can make arguments for tastefulness of things. Okay. So with all of this, like where I'm kind of going toward is like I want to shift us toward a better sexual relationship. Period. Like our society. All right, because at the end of the day, it's like so many things are talking past the real issue. Like, for example, the abortion debate. You know, is it a human? Is it not? Are you really taking a life or is it just a fetus? Right. Like that's like so far past like what the actual talking point should be. And the actual talking point is, should we be having sex if there's the potential of creating new life? Should we be doing that? Like, should sex just be this play thing? That we just, you know, get to have fun with. Like, contraceptive contraception has done this interesting thing that has turned sex into a toy like 98% of the time. But it's that other 2% of the time it creates a life. <laughs> right? Like, no birth control is, like, completely perfect. Um, and so people doing this kind of stuff, it's going to be creating, uh, you know, life. And so the question, really, it's not, is it, is it life or is it not life? Uh, the question is... Should we be having the sex, right? Should we be operating in this casual sex culture? And I believe no. I believe that at the end of the day, like that doesn't bring anyone any sort of deep fulfillment. It doesn't bring anybody any sort of deep, um, you know, uh, relational satisfaction. You know, I think ultimately what we want to be able to be is loved entirely in our sexuality. That includes our fertility. And so like in order to, to get ourselves to that point, we're going to have to Find a way to mix modernity with these classical ideals because whether we like it or not, birth control has changed the sexual landscape tremendously. Uh, like to the point where I, I don't even know what it looks like to go back. Either we're going to have to have like a, a split in the culture where some people choose to reject it, which I mean, I guess technically I'm on that side. I'm Catholic. You know, we don't use birth control. We don't believe in it. We don't believe it's a, it's a good thing because we believe that we should be fundamentally open to life. And if we're not open to life, well, then we either don't have sex or we have sex outside of a fertile window. Okay. Like we, we actually work with the biology rather than just trying to put like an easy mode button on it. And this is, this is a hard thing to, to try and sell other people on. But I think the, the main selling point is that you get to be you and you get to and you and you have the right to be demanded in loving and being loved who you are right like you have the right to demand that someone loves you fully in your sexuality right like it's it's like oh i only love like a, a girl's like oh i only love you if you wear this rubber bag over your dick you know it's like because i can, i don't love you enough to have your kid you know i have we'll have some fun but i'm not gonna have your kid i don't, I don't love you like that no it's like that's the whole thing is like women, I think they want to be loved for all of themselves. And that's why I talk about this fashion stuff, because when you put yourself physically on display with revealing clothing, I think you're inviting people to love you just for your physical appearance. And I think that this is enhanced so much more even by like, you know, OnlyFans culture, Instagram culture, just like everything that wants to reduce you to a set of pixels. And it's like, you know, how well are my pixels trending? How many likes did they get today? And, uh, that is fundamentally dehumanizing to women. And this is, it just feeds this whole big, disgusting sexual culture that we operate in where we're kind of like, we get to be, because of modern technology, because of modern birth control, we get to be essentially children with a very dangerous and almost neutered toy, which is our sexuality. And 
the the most da- one of the most dangerous aspects of it is going to be rearing its head more and more in the coming years here where we see the women who opted for a you know this this feminist lifestyle of career first and everything like that and supported by men um, and in many ways egged on by men to do this kind of thing and uh, they are going to be reaching the point where they're not able to have kids you know maybe they maybe they didn't freeze their eggs or maybe they did and then their their eggs didn't didn't work. You know, that's not a foolproof procedure. We're going to have, uh, you know, people are a lot of people talking about population collapse, right? What is this about? This is all about sexuality. These are all sexual issues that are about like, what are our priorities sexually? And this Instagram only fans fueled culture of like wearing underwear to the gym. It's creating this, it's creating this problem. It's feeding into all of it. It's creating this ideal of a woman who is this provocative sex toy. But notice how that has nothing to do with fertility. That has nothing to do with being a good mother, right? And so it creates this ideal woman that's modeled more after a porn star. And what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get a pornified culture, and that's not going to lead to anything good. All right. And so what I want to bring back, what I want to bring back is the idea of both the true high-value man and the true high-value woman. So for a high value man, in my opinion, it's not just a guy who makes money. I'm not just talking about financial value. I'm talking about a holistically aligned man who knows how to provide. You know, he can get his shit done in the world, but he's also deeply moral, deeply committed to the flourishing of not only himself, but to his family and to the world that he operates in at large. That to me is a high value man. Okay. And that that sexual morality, that's at the very freaking center of that. Because you can't do any of that stuff if you're sexually immoral. What kind of husband could you be? What kind of father could you be if you're just like constantly jerking off the porn, seeing prostitutes, whatever, okay? So that's one ideal. But the other ideal is the high-value woman. And who is she? Who is she? She's the woman that knows that she is more than just her sexual appearance, okay? She knows that she has value as a wife, as a mother, as a you know creative, as a whatever it is she wants to do in the world, she has this value, and she doesn't need to pop some cleavage out to like be something special, right? And she has to, in the same way that a man has to develop the restraint to not like grab his wiener and look at you know pictures on the internet. Okay, a woman has to avoid the temptation to dress revealingly for Instagram or in real life just so she can grab some cheap attention. It's just this this masturbatory sexual self-indulgence that is literally <laughs> flushing the quality of our culture down the toilet. Okay, and so you know, we haven't seen the worst of this yes yet. Not even close. When the, with the population collapse, with the you know the the millions of women waking up realizing, holy shit, I I don't get to have a family life. Um, you know all this kind of stuff that's coming. It's going to be devastatingly sad, and I have no idea what it's going to look like. But I think we are going to see some sort of reversion to classical values, at least within a subset of the population, because people are realizing this shit doesn't work. And the only way we're going to really like figure this out is if we have conversations about it. So what do you guys think, right? Like, what do you think of my idea of this high value man, high value woman? I know some of you guys might like it. Some of you guys might not. You know, if you've got any other ideas, any other points of view on this this topic, let me know because I want this to be a conversation. This is how cultures are formed. It's like, all right, well, what's working? What's not? Oh, here's the direction we should go. Okay, and and I don't believe in going to like this complete fundamentalist, uh, extremely repressive, you know, old school kind of thing. It's like I think we need to we need to embrace the good of modernity, the goodness of technology, but we also need to like deeply look at like what works as humans here. What 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 kind of configurations, what kind of societal preferences actually breed true flourishing. And so let me know what you guys think. I would love to continue this conversation. If you're interested in developing sexual self-mastery, if you're interested in learning how like you can maintain control over your mind, regardless of what women are wearing around you, well, then you'll want to check out the sec- the Self Mastery Club where I have the Reforged Man course and a number of other workshops on sexual self-mastery. So check out the link in the description and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the club. All right, that's what I have for this one. Ooh, yeah, see you in the next one.